Hey guys, welcome to another video and now we'll be working question 3 from the June 2019 paper 2. And 3A starts by saying, use a ruler, a pencil and a pair of compasses only. Construct the line NLM in which LM is equal to 12 centimeter and MLN is equal to 30 degrees. That means 30 degrees is formed at the point L and angle LMN is equal to 90 degrees, which means the 90 degrees is formed at the point M. So being the medium that we're using to demonstrate this, what I'm going first going to do is to show you generally how to construct a 30 degrees, then show you to, how to construct a 90 degrees, then we look at the answer for this particular question. In order to construct a 30 degrees angle, you usually first draw a ray. For example, we're labeling it AB and we let AB the vertex of the angle we're going to construct. We then place the tip of the compass on A and draw an arc which cuts AB at some point, let's call it X. And we call this arc as arc one and retain the width of our compass. And this is our compass that the question is making a reference to for the remaining steps. We then place the tip of the compass, which is a pointed part at the point X. And then we make another arc on our original arc that was there. And this arc, we call it arc number two, for example. At this point, if you're asked to construct a 60 degrees angle, this would have been your 60 degrees angle. So from the point A through this intersection Y, it would have been our 60 degrees angle. However, we're interested in constructing a 30 degrees, so therefore we'll need to bisect this 60 degrees angle using these further steps in order to get the 30 degrees. So we now place our point, the pointed part of our compass, at this point Y where the the other, the original two arcs had intersected. And then maintaining the length of the arc, we then make a third arc, which cuts our second arc, which was made. And at this point where our second and third arc intersect, that is now our 30 degrees angle. So we now draw a point from point A through this second intersection. And when we measure that, we will get a perfectly constructed 30 degrees angle, which will look like this. Now, if we're constructing a 90 degrees, there are different ways that we can. But one famous way of doing it is by drawing a line. In this case, we're calling it PA. We then place the compass at the point P. So we open the compass to listen more than half of the length of the line and then draw an arc that cut this original line in this case pa where it cuts the line now we're going to put the pointed part of our compass at this point and cut this arc first arc which we're now going to call arc two and then we're going to put the pointed part of our compass on arc two where arc two and arc one intersects and cut and make another cut an arc number one, which we can call arc number three. It is now arc number two, which in this case is R, and arc number three, which is S, that we're going to use to construct our final part of our 90 degrees angle. So now with the point still at R, we make, with the point, no, with the point of the compass, sorry, at S, we draw an arc up top, and then we use the same point at R to draw another arc up top. And where both arcs intersect from S and R, they now join to this original point on the line. And that is our perfectly constructed 90 degrees angle. So now looking at the question, using a ruler, of pins and a pair of compasses only, construct the triangle N. LM. So what we did first was to measure and mark off the 12 centimeter and label the points L and M, which is shown here. We then draw the arc, which we knew about, which start the 60 degrees angle. So at the point L, we're constructing the 30 degrees angle by bisecting a 60 degrees angle, which we just looked at. So this is the process which we use. So this first intersection here would have been our 60 degrees and we're bisecting it to get our 30 degrees angle right here. So this is our 30 degrees and our line is 12 centimeter, which we use 
to measure by using the ruler by continuing now at the point M, we're now going to construct our 90 degrees angle. Because remember, angle LMN is at the is 90 degrees, which means that our 90 degrees at the point M. So we now construct our 90 degrees at the point M, and therefore we get this for our 90 degrees. From the line from the line from M and the line from L, which would be the line from M, the 90 degrees, and the line from L, which are 30 degrees, they should meet. And at this point, where they intersect and meet is where we'll call N. And this is what your triangle will look like, but a more straightforward way, of course, and lines will be straighter, and your arcs and curves will look much more defined and neat. And remember, you're getting points for the clearly drawn construction lines. So this is just a representation of what your triangle will look like. Part B now says triangle ABC with the vertices A11, B is at 14, and C is at 31 is shown on the diagram below. And it says angle ABC is mapped onto angle LMN by a reflection in the x-axis followed by a reflection in the y-axis. And it is saying on the diagram, draw and label triangle LMN. So before we go into that, we're just going to look at a bit of notes on this topic as well. So if we're reflecting through the x-axis, the reflection in the x-axis, the mirror line will be where y is equal to zero. So what we're saying is the x-coordinate remains unchanged anytime that you are reflecting in the x-axis. So the x-coordinate remains unchanged, but the y-coordinate is multiplied by negative one. So therefore, changes its sign. We're now reflecting in the y-axis. Under reflection in the y-axis, the mirror line is where x is equal to zero. The x-coordinate is multiplied by negative one. Therefore, it now changes its sign, but the y-coordinate remains unchanged. And that is for reflection in the y-axis. So that is what we now use to determine our point here for the first triangle where it had stated that it first reflected in the x-axis. So A was 1, 1. So therefore, the x-axis remains unchanged and the y-axis is multiplied by negative 1. So it was 1 multiplied by negative 1, which gives us coordinate of 1, negative 1. So it would have been 1 and negative 1. For B, B was 1, 4 here for the original point. Now, when it was reflected, what it will be is the x-axis will remain unchanged. So it is still a positive 1. However, the y-axis is supposed to be multiplied by negative 1. So it becomes 4 multiplied by negative 1. And therefore, the new coordinates will be 1, negative 4 for B, B prime. Now, for C prime, C original value was 3, 1. Remember again, the value for x remains unchanged, so it is still a positive 3. However, the value for y is multiplied by negative 1, and 1 multiplied by negative 1 will leave us with a negative 1. So the value for c prime is 3, negative 1. And that is how we now construct our first triangle, which is reflected in the x-axis. But now the triangle, now the final triangle, which is LMN, which is now reflected in the y-axis, we're doing the same thing. And remember the notes said what we're doing when it is reflected now in the y-axis, the y value remains unchanged, and then the x value is multiplied by negative one. And it is the same thing that happened here. So what we have is, or a prime was one, negative one so the negative one from the y value remained and then the value for x is multiplied by negative one so what we have now is negative one negative one for our values the value for m now coming from b prime b was one negative four 
So again, the y value remain unchanged as we're reflecting in the y axis, so it is negative four, and the x value is multiplied by negative one, so it is one multiplied by negative one, and what we have is negative one, negative four being the value for our m, our point m. For c prime, the value for c was three, negative one, so again, our y value remain the same, which is negative one, our x value now, which is three, is multiplied by negative one. So what we have is negative three, negative one, being our coordinates for the triangle that we're interested in, which is L, M, N. And this is our answer, triangle L, M, N. So this is our final answer after a reflection was done in the x-axis, followed by a reflection in the y-axis. Part two now says, describe a single transformation that maps triangle ABC onto triangle LMN. So what we could have seen and observed is that the transformation which maps triangle ABC onto triangle LMN is a 180 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise rotation about the center. So here is triangle ABC and the triangle LMN is like a flip. It is right across from it. It's like, look, it is reflected, basically. So it is a rotation of 180 degrees, whether, whether clockwise or anti-clockwise. So triangle LMN is congruent to triangle ABC, meaning that it is identical in shape and size. So the shape or size basically doesn't change. And when we also join the object and its matching point, Along the lines, we see that they all pass through the zero point, which is the center of rotation, and all are 180 degrees, meaning they are straight lines so from L to the point A, from C to the point N, and from B to the point M. So this shows the transformation is a 180 degrees, whether clockwise or anti-clockwise. Part three now says state the two by two matrix for the transformation that maps triangle ABC onto triangle LMN. So what we know is that for that particular transformation, the two by two matrix, which is usually given, which maps, for example, triangle ABC onto triangle LMN is usually the identity matrix. The transformation which maps an object onto its image through the origin and it's 108 and this 180 degrees is given by this particular two by two matrix which is the negative one zero zero negative one and these are corresponding x and y values the negative one negative one so this can also be proved through the transformation that had taken place which was through the x-axis then through the y-axis so if we remember when we're looking at the x-axis um, reflecting through the x-axis the x value remained the same. So this is our x value. It remained the same while our y value was multiplied by negative one. So this x value remained the same. Our y value, which is negative one here, is multiplied by negative one. So we have a positive one here. And now for this second matrix representing the reflection through the y axis, remember for that our y value remained the same. So our negative one here, remain the same and our x value is multiplied by negative one. Our x value being multiplied by negative one give us a positive one here. Now we can go ahead and work this out to see what our final answer will be. So remember it will be row against column. So what we have is negative one multiplied by one plus zero multiplied by zero. So this part here. So row by column and we get this first part here and then we have negative one multiplied by zero plus zero multiplied by negative one so zero multiplied by negative one then we have row by column so we have zero multiplied by one here plus one 
multiplied by zero here. And then we have zero multiplied by zero to give us this here, and then zero, sorry, then one multiplied by negative one to give us this here. When we add everything here now, we'll get a negative one for this part, a zero for this part, a, neg a zero for this part, and a negative one for this part. And this proves that this is our two by two matrix for the transformation that maps triangle ABC onto triangle L, M, N. So thank you for watching and we'll see you for question four.